Welcome to this tutorial for the installation and use of Cloudscapes for Blender. After downloading the file, you have to extract it using WinRAR for example. You can now delete the RAR file if needed. All the elements are in the folder. Let's go to Blender. Go to Edit, Preferences, and in the File Path tab, click on the little plus to add a new path. Select the folder where the blend file and the two text files are located. Click on Add Asset Library. The path is now added. Don't forget to save the preferences. Open a new window in Blender and click on Asset Browser. Select Cloudscapes from the list. You can now see all the clouds sorted by category. To add a cloud, nothing could be easier. Click and drag in your 3D window. By default, the cloud is rotated 90 degrees. In the end panel in Item, add a 90 degree X rotation so that the cloud is in the right direction. Add a sky and switch to render mode. You can modify the shader of the cloud in the corresponding tab. You can change the density. But also its color and various other parameters. An interesting function is to replace the temperature value by density and to increase the black body intensity. Now lower the temperature to 100. Your cloud turns into a ball of fire. You can play with the different sliders to get some really cool effects. Render settings now. Clouds can look too dense and the light doesn't penetrate them. Go to the cycle settings and in the light paths tab, increase the volume value. The light will diffuse much better in the cloud, but the rendering time will be longer. With light penetration? Without light penetration? Another very important setting that will allow you to gain in rendering time is found further down in the Volume tab. This is the Max Steps. The higher the value, the longer the rendering time. You can lower it considerably. Look at the difference. The rendering will be a little less realistic. If you increase it, the rendering time is longer, but it will be more realistic. Now let's use the Scat Pack for GeoScatter. Add a plane. In GeoScatter, select it. In Biome Scatter, click on Open Biomes. In Preferences, make sure that in the tab Biomes Environment Paths, the button Search for .blend in Asset Library Paths is checked. You will find the whole list of your asset library. At the bottom, you can see the path to Cloudscapes that we created earlier. Now let's install the Scat Pack. At the top, click on Install a Package and select the Scat Pack. Click on Install Package and wait. A window will tell you that the installation is finished. Go to Biomes and in the Cloudscapes folder, you can see the different biomes available. Choose a biome and add it. The loading bar shows the progress. When finished, you can close the window. The biome has been added, but we don't see it for the moment. The plane is too small. Switch to edit mode and enlarge it with the S key on the keyboard. We start to see the clouds. In the view tab, increase the clip end to 8000 meters to see much further. 
you can now see all the clouds. The same problem will occur with the camera. It will not see far enough. Select your camera and in the Lens tab, increase the clip end to 8000 meters. Don't forget to select your shot and go to the Object Properties tab and in the Visibility menu and uncheck all the buttons so that you don't see the shot when rendering. Now switch to Render Mode. You can see the biome. If the rendering time is too long, lower the number of volume or lower the max steps. If you enlarge your plane in object mode, don't forget to apply the scale by doing Ctrl plus A, then Scale. In edit mode, no problem. In GeoScatter, you can now modify and customize your biome. It is easy and fast to create a new sky from a biome. Enjoy! What's new in Cloudscapes version 2? Discover the new categories. As easy as ever to use, just click and drag in your scene. Now let's open the shader to customize it. You can change the intensity of the fire with the black body intensity slider. The black body tint slider lets you change the color of the fire. The temperature slider changes the power of the fire. 1000, 3000, 10,000. As always, you can change the density of the smoke. But also the color of the smoke. The important thing to remember is that color and density influence the smoke. Black body intensity, black body tint, and temperature impact the fire. Let's use another example with fire. It contains almost no smoke. For fireworks, play with colors. For tornadoes, it's the same as for clouds. All other categories work in the same way. Note that in explosions that combine smoke and fire in the VDB settings, you can choose whether to preview smoke or fire. Happy blending!